One of these young ladies is world's women's champion at this rugged sport. Watch. What is your name, please? My name is Betty Ellis. What is your name, please? My name is Betty Ellis. What is your name, please? My name is Betty Ellis. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Betty Ellis and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. And welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Camel Cigarettes. Now may I introduce our panel. First, Mr. Tom Poston. Next, Miss Kitty Carlisle. Then, Mr. Don Amici. And finally, Miss Polly Bergen. <laughs> panel, will you please open your envelopes, take out your affidavit cards, and follow along as I read. I, Betty Ellis, was born and raised in the timber country of the Pacific Northwest. I excel in a sport which most people associate primarily with rugged lumberjacks, log rolling, or more technically, burling. Two competing burlers stand at either end of a floating log. With their feet, they make the log spin, bob, and buck until one of them falls off the log and into the water. Last month, in the annual international competition, I again became the world's champion woman log roller. Signed, Betty Ellis. <laughs> well, we have the pleasure of three attractive young ladies to open tonight's festivities panel, each one claiming to be Betty Ellis, as you heard, champion log roller. Let's begin this first round of questioning tonight with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, Bud. Uh, I'll ask number three, what is... Uh the name of the tool used by uh, lumberjacks to move logs in a stream. That's called a pick. A, a, pardon me? A pick. Anything else? Yes, a PV. Thank you. Is there another word for it, number two? No. Uh, how about number three? Would you agree that a cant hook would be right for that? No. You don't agree with that? Tell me, number one, what is the wood made of that you do your log burling on? Or <laughs> boiling? To use the... Uh, burling. Eastern oh, burling, yes. <laughs> Red what, is the, what, what kind of a, a tree is that log Red made? Red fir and white pine. Thank you. Where are these events held? Number one, again. They're held all over the United States and Canada. Kitty Carlisle. Number one, number two, well, what is log rolling done for seriously when it's not in competition like this? So what, are you, what is it done for seriously? What is log rolling yes. done for? Uh, I don't understand what you mean. Well, I mean, there's a purpose to log rolling, which is oh, not just doing logs, uh, what you the, do on the... To get huh? the logs down the stream. I see. To the uh, number two, number three, what does log rolling mean when it's used in a political sense? <laughs> number one? I don't know. You don't know. Number two, where do you come from? Williamstown, um, Idaho. Idaho? Yes. And you log uh, roll in Idaho? Days. Yes. Uh, number one, how many contests are there in the, in the United States through which this championship is decided? Just one. One held annually. Is that your answer also, number two? Yes. Number, number three, yes, you agree with that? Uh, what, uh, number two, is there any specific size of the logs that are used in this? They're uh, all 14 feet long and different widths. Uh, is there, number three, is there a limit in, in how narrow it can be and how wide it can be? No, the length is generally the same. But the, but the width can be any size at all? The diameter, yes. Uh, number one. Polly? Uh, thank you, bud. Uh, number one, where, where is this championship match held? It was held this year in Hayward, Wisconsin. I'm, I beg your pardon? Hayward, Wisconsin. Hayward, Wisconsin. Uh, number two, what year did Catherine Hodges hold the championship? 55 or 54? 55. Uh, number one, do you agree with that? What was the question again, please? Uh, what year did Catherine Hodges hold the, cha the championship, 55 or 54? 
I do not know. Do you know number three? Mm, not. Uh, uh, number three, uh, in log rolling, is there a specific time in which to knock the partner off the, the log? Yes, there is. What is that time? Well, it depends on which size the log is. Well, take any size. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. It's time to vote without any further consultation panel. So will you kindly mark your ballot and do as usual. Namely, vote for number one, number two, or number three. A team of challengers, of course, will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked? Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for n number one, and uh, there's a joke somewhere in there about falling off a log, but I can't, I can't quite <laughs> phrase it. Right it was as easy as, I don't know what I'm doing. Rolling Stone. Kitty. I voted for number three. Um, I thought she had the strongest looking legs when I saw her on the platform. And I think you have to have strong legs. And I don't think they do log rolling in Idaho. Oh, I guess they do. She gave me a... Oh, well. Dad? You're... I voted for number one. Uh, I thought she knew the most about dog sledding of any of them. <laughs> dog sledding? Is that what this is all about? <laughs> And finally, Polly, which one did you vote? Uh, I voted for number one. Uh, I trapped number two with Catherine Hodges, who's my cook, but... Oh, well, that's it. I knew it wasn't. Uh, but one and three didn't fall for it. A three looked like she was sorry she didn't know what year, whether it was 55 or 54. So I, I voted for number one, but it was between one, uh, one and three, and I, I just guessed. I wasn't that sure. Okay, there we have it. The way we voted and the way our minds were made up, if they compare favorably with yours or with the truth, let's find out right now, shall we? As we discover which one of these three young ladies is the real champion lady log roller or burler. So will the real Betty Ellis please stand up? bless you and thank you very much and uh, we didn't fool the panel too well but number three did get one so that works along okay do you have any in fact don voted for a dog sledder i don't think that's yeah. bad at all no i don't either <laughs> well i figured i knew as much about dog sledding as i know about log rolling so i might as well vote for the dog sledder i don't know Polly, is this uh, an arrangement you have with your cook? Instead of a raise, you mention her name on the show every so often? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How did you know? I just you want to expose it out. me in front of everyone, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number two, let's expose your identity now and find out who you really are and what you really do. My name is Patricia Fay, and I'm an actress and a comedian. And finally, number three, what do you do, and what is your real name? My real name is Susan Watson, and I'm a singer-dancer in the Broadway show Bye Bye Birdie. Oh. <laughs> and when we check the score, we find that yours was the only incorrect vote. That means, of course, that $250, only a total of $250 from camels, but of course, along with that goes our thanks and a carton of camel cigarettes for each of you. I hope you enjoyed your visit. We certainly enjoyed having you here. You. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> You know, playing it smart is more than just a phrase. It's uh, second nature to a heads-up ball player, whatever he's doing. Here's James Daly to introduce just such a guy. Now, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Terence Cahill. What is your name, please? My name is Terence Cahill. What is your name, please? My name is Terence Cahill. Again, will you follow along with your affidavit card on these gentlemen? I, Terence Cahill, am a former criminal investigator for the London Metropolitan Police Force. My interest in animals led me into Scotland Yard's dog section, where I finally became an instructor, training London bobbies to handle dogs on police patrol. Dogs I have trained have located hidden narcotics, lost persons, tracked down criminals, and even found a lost tortoise. I am in this country to instruct the police of two major cities in the training and use of dogs in police work. 
Signed, Terence Cahill. From three ladies to three gentlemen, we have this time claiming to be Terence Cahill, formerly of the London Police. And we start this round of questioning with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. Number one, is there a formal procedure about rewards in, in, in London? Uh, if you lose something, what is the procedure about the reward? Well, the procedure is that if you lose anything, you go to the lost property office and you do have to pay a percentage of the value. I see. Number two, we have bloodhounds in this country to look for lost people and so forth. What do you use? We use um, Altations in England. I think they're here they're called German Shepherds. Uh, number three, does the London Bobby carry a gun? No. Mm. Never? No. Uh, number one, if I'm at the Savoy looking out of the window, uh, can I see Scotland Yard? No, you cannot. From the Savoy? No. Don, uh, number uh, two, at what age are these dogs brought in to be trained, generally speaking? About one year is the best age. Uh, number three, how long are these dogs effective? What, their life? Well, for how many years, about? Can vary. Four, five, maybe six years. Uh, number uh, one, are these dogs vicious at all times once they have been trained? No, they're not. Uh, in, in other words, you can, you can they turn, turn off well, and on. Uh, well, they're uh, not vicious at, uh, at any time because they live with the constable who is training the dog. I see. Uh, 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 number two, what is the uh, uh, specific reason why dogs are used over some other way of tracking uh, uh, criminals? Well, I think they have a superior sense of scent. <laughs> number three? Well, the sense of smell is stronger. I mean. uh, number one, what two major cities are you working with? Well, I uh, started in Baltimore, and I'm now in Boston. I see. Number two, are you working in the same two cities? I have, am at the moment in Washington. Number three? I started in uh, Baltimore, and I'm now in Washington. I see. Uh, number two... In training a dog, uh, the man who is, who is uh, being attacked by the dog in training, does he wear anything to protect himself? Oh, yes, he does, in the, in the early stage. So. Uh, what would he wear? Uh, could you describe the thing that he might wear, say, on an arm, if well, the dog he, were to leap for his arm? Um, I think different things are used in different places. I mean... Uh, well, could you give me, say, one example? Well, uh, we use leather supported uh, with padding inside. I see. Tom? Uh, thank you, Bud. Uh, I would like to ask number three, it may take a little while, but suppose, for instance, that the arresting officer is not able to give commands to his dog for one of many reasons, and the dog overtakes the fugitive. What is to prevent the dog from uh, maiming him or possibly killing him if he puts up any kind of a fight? Well, they're trained just to hold. How, how, how do they do that without uh, hurting... By going for the arm. The right and they arm. can hold a grown man that way? Oh, yes. Number, number two. That's it. It's time to vote once again, and without consultation with dogs or anyone else, will you kindly mark your ballot. And as you do, you will vote for number one, number two, or number three. Everyone voted? No. <laughs> Uniform answer tonight. Tom has. Kitty, have you? Yes, Don, you have? Yes. And Polly? All right. Oh. Tom, what is your vote, please? Well, I was so quick about it, I'm probably wrong. I voted for number three. I like a guy that goes from Baltimore to Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty, your vote, please. I voted for number two because I think he was the most dog-lovering, lovering of them all. Dog-lovering? Because... But she has a right to say Yes, she that. has. Yes, she you, has, and I think... You go right ahead. That's you right. have to love animals to train them. That's, lover them. That's, yeah. okay. And I think he loved the animals more than the others. Well, that's a loverly thought. <laughs> Don? I voted for number uh, one because I thought that probably of... Uh, all the cities I know that need dogs to help in the tracking of animals, it would be Boston and uh, tracking Baltimore. Animals. The tracking of, uh, of human animals, yes. <laughs> You're in the dog sled department. <laughs> <laughs> which or one house, do you... dog house. 
Polly, which oh, do you I think is the I long road? I, I voted on game three. Is that all right? <laughs> okay. I voted for number two. I would only like to say this. I was in Philadelphia last Saturday for a show, and they had a display of the police and the police dogs at work with, uh, you know, a, 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 a policeman dressed up as a woman and, and a robber steals her purse and then the dog is told to attack and the, it's the most fantastic thing you've ever seen. They, they absolutely, they understand better than my children, which I resent. <laughs> uh, I, I tell you honestly, number two has a double-breasted suit on. And I, so, so I also voted for him for that, but they probably did that on purpose because number one has an English tie on and number three is the most American looking, so it's probably him. <laughs> All right, Polly, you've given your vote. Now would you give your reason? Oh. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right, the votes are all in, and we leave and them there. Told her to. <laughs> and now let's discover which one of these gentlemen is the real dog trainer, formerly of the London Police. The Will or Real, Terence Cahill. Please stand up. Thank you very much. It's your fault. What's my fault? Well, I wanted to vote for number three because well, he was the most American, and but, you didn't give me time. But you had such good, <laughs> you had such good reasons why you voted the way you did. Well, uh, but I, all of my reasons were why I thought it was number three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, I please? Do. Yes. My name is Eric Wheatley, and I'm sales development manager for British Overseas Airways Corporation. Oh. Thank you, sir. <laughs> And number two, may we have the same information about you, your real name and what you do. My name is Robert Irving, and I'm a conductor of orchestras, that is, I'm not trained. And I work at the city center with the New York City Ballet and the New York City Opera. Thank you, sir. And the scoring department we find this time is just the reverse. There were three incorrect votes. Therefore, at $250 each, you gentlemen have a grand total of $750 from Camel Cigarettes and a carton of Camels for each of you. Thanks very much for your visit. Hope you enjoyed it. Good night. Good luck to you. Now, panel, may I present our third team of challengers. What? is your name, please? My name is Shreyut Shet. What is your name, please? My name is Shreyut Shet. What is your name, please? My name is Shreyut Shet. Follow along once again, if you will, panel, with your card copies of this affidavit. I, Shreyut Shet, now live in the United States with my wife and family. I am from Bombay, India and earned my B.S. degree at a college in Ahmedabad, India. I also have a master's degree, which I got at the University of Michigan at Ann Arbor. I am now working in this country doing research work. I am a graduate pharmacist. Signed, Shriyut Shet. Three gentlemen this time, claiming to be Shriyut Chef, Indian pharmacist. And we'll begin this final round with Polly Bergen. Polly? Thank you, Bud. Number one, <clears throat> pardon me, what is Praveen? <clears throat> what is Praveen? I'm not sure right now. Uh, number two, could you tell me? Yeah, it's uh, for the nasal congestion. Thank you. Uh, number three, um, what would, uh, if you take an aspirin with codeine in it, what might be the effect? Relief of Besides pain. getting rid of a headache. <laughs> uh, nothing particular, I don't think. Uh, number one, could you tell me? Nothing particular. I might feel a little sleepy if a lot of coding in it. Mm. <laughs> Tom Poston. Oh, thank you. The coding took effect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. uh, number two, what is the uh, what is the name given to that uh, that that? Uh, kind of medicine which which prescribes very small doses of uh, of medicine prescription medicine to patients oh, there may be hundreds of uh, small uh, doses 
Uh, maybe you know what I mean. Number three, do you know what I mean? No, I... All medicine is prescribed, but uh, just like any other, but in very, very small doses. Do you happen to know what that is? Uh, no, I don't think there is a specific term for it that I know of. Dennis, Kitty? 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 What is Bombay Duck, number one? I guess it's Bombay Duck. What is a Bombay Duck, number two? Same. What is a placebo, number three? A placebo is a dummy uh, used in medical investigations. Number one, can you tell me what city, what is famous in Agra? In Agra? In Agra. A oh, city. Agra. What is, fam what is it famous for? Taj Mahal. Don Amici. Uh, number one, what poison smells like almonds? Uh, mm. It's a benzaldehyde. I couldn't understand you. Benzaldehyde. Number, smells like bitter almonds. Number two, would you say that? <laughs> Benzaldehyde, I would say. I beg your pardon? Same thing, benzaldehyde, yeah. Uh, number... <laughs> number three, what is the, uh, uh, population of Ann Arbor? Uh, about 28,000. Number... I guess that's it. <laughs> we leave it right there, pinpointed on the benzaldehyde. And we will <laughs> please mark your ballots, if you will. And as you do... Follow the usual custom of voting for number one, number two, or number three. I quit. Okay, has everyone marked their ballot? Tom, for whom did you vote this time? I voted for number three, Bud, and everybody else too. <laughs> I'll tell you your vote. I voted for number three. You knew what a placebo was, but the other two gave wonderful answers. Mm -hmm. Don? I voted for number two, and I wish I had a good reason for voting for number two. Uh, and Polly? I voted for number three because uh, he knew most of the answers, I thought, which probably means that he just studied harder than the other liars. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the books are in, the minds are made up, and now let's find out which one of these three gentlemen is the real Indian pharmacist. The will the real, Shriyut Shet. Please stand up. Oh, well, now, wait a minute. Drug wait a minute. Let's They're try it again. Oh, wait, let's try it again. Will the real Shriyut Chef, who went to the University of Michigan, please sit down? <laughs> okay, I'll try once more. Will the real Shriyut Chef, who got his BS degree in India and his master's degree at the University of Michigan and who is a pharmacist, please stand up? Well, I don't <laughs> Okay, will the panel please stand up? <laughs> okay. As you can see, they are all Shriyut chefs, and I'm afraid we've taken advantage of you tonight, panel. These three gentlemen are all named chefs, and they all have identical backgrounds. I'd like you to meet number one, PR chef, number two, PB chef, and number three, BB chef. Now, one thing that I am curious about. What does Shriyut mean? It uh, simply means mister in Indian language. I thought it was the first name. Oh. <laughs> well, fair enough. Let's check up on our score and see how well we did. None of you voted for all three of them. No. So therefore, we're going to count them as all incorrect votes. And, <laughs> and $1,000 from Camel Cigarettes for you gentlemen. Thanks very much. And good luck to you. On your way out, there will be a carton of Camels for each of you. Good night. <laughs> short and sweet from our ultimate sponsor, Helene Curtis. That's about it. I guess I'd like to warn all of our good listeners that starting September 26th in most of the country, our show will come to you to tell the truth. will come to you every Monday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Now remember that, will you? Monday night at 7.30 for to tell the truth starting September 26th. However, so far as next week is concerned, we will be here for one more Thursday. So join us next Thursday and then pick up on every Monday night thereafter. What was that again, uh, so I could be here? It sounded a little bit like one of your reasons, didn't it, Polly? 
Well, anyway, I just it don't is want to miss the show. September you know. 26th. Will you please be here, Polly? On a Monday. On a Monday night. At 7.30. 7.30. Oh, I see. Yes. All right. And Kitty, will you be here, too? I will, indeed. And uh, Shrihut Poston and Shrihut... Uh, <laughs> 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 we see you all later. That's all the time we have for tonight. So, good night, panel. Good night, night. night. Bud Collier saying good night from Camel Cigarettes and reminding you, all of you Shrihuts out there, tell the truth. Good night, everybody. To Tell the Truth is the Mark Goodson, Bill Codman production in association with the CBS Television Network.